Yo, what's good? It's your boy Candyman in the building. You already know what it is. Y'all listening to the Candyman TV on Anchor. Make sure you go like, share, subscribe. Links in my description. Today on the Candy Shop is the very first interview. I told y'all about to have the interviews. I told y'all I ain't playing no games. We got my boy Chris Child, Wichita State University, artist, shoe connoisseur, sponsor, ha hashtag sponsor Chris. The Snapple Connoisseur. You feel me? How you doing, fam? I'm doing amazing, bro. You know, like I said, just living life. But I want to talk to you earlier. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I um, I remember I was on Twitter and I was just you know scrolling by and everything, and I, I spotted I spotted fam's uh art, you know, on his on his on his shoes and things like that. He got the uh these Wu Tang customs. Couple other things, you know what I'm saying? Great artist. You know what I'm saying? Tell, tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, fam. So, I'm an artist slash shoe customizer, overall, like, business mogul. Uh, so, I started basically like, customizing shoes in 2013, um, 2013, 2014, like my senior year of high school. Uh, after that, it just kind of started as a hobby. I just wanted to do it for myself, just wanted to look different from everybody else. And then uh, I remember I got like 17 screenshots and I thought I was like, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm cold. Right? I got the screenshots on Snapchat. I said, oh, you know, they ain't messing with me, all this type of stuff like that. I get to school next day. I thought I'm like, you know, the man. And they say, you know, like people, I'm in different group messages and like people just talking stuff about that. Right. So after that, it just made me like, you know, just work harder, just keep grinding. Because like I said, first, the first shoe, is, it's always going to be kind of trash when you start doing it. It's like, you know, when you first take your, your jumper. More than likely, you're going to miss the first shot you take, you know. Um, but after that, I just kept grinding. After that, I went to, to college. I went to Wichita State University. And then freshman year, I really didn't do nothing. Um, I did a couple of shoes. I uh, got me, like, in a couple of magazines. Uh, a couple of celebrities, like, reached out. I was able to work for them. Kept grinding. Sophomore year, took it more serious. Um, and then after that, I just had my head down. and just said, kept working, kept working. Um, after that, I studied abroad. I went to... Um, ESCE, the International Business School in France, and for like six months. Um, then I graduated, came back, uh, focused more on my business, started growing, started buying more assets, uh, started learning more about, you know, uh, just more about business, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, credit, um, stocks, all these different things like that. And so now we're here right now. Okay, okay, yeah. That's a good thing though, because I remember we, when we was talking earlier, we was talking about besides your art and you know things you have passions for about like stocks and investing, and that's really what I'm into. That's because it's really essential now, especially nowadays with all this COVID going on, everybody losing their jobs and just getting let off. And you can have your own business and do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? You'll be set. You know you might fall back. You know you might fall off. Stem, you know every everybody took an L somewhere. But it's best to, you know, own your own yourself and know what you're in for and especially as black men. What uh what so what um what makes you mo like what motivates you most to for your art? Is it like a family member or do you have certain uh do you have a certain artist that you look up to? Um at first it was just proving people wrong cuz like I said at first it just started as a hobby. I just wanted to do stuff for myself. And then, uh, I guess, like, you know, you're more younger in high school. Like I said, when I got those screenshots, whatever, once I, like, realized, like, oh, this was going on, you know, it's like, oh, no, I got to prove y'all wrong. But the more um, the more I get into my career, I uh, just keep advancing. That mindset is being pushed, like, lower and lower on my priority list, like, the totem pole. Uh, just because, like, all right, now I'm just doing this for myself, uh, like, to prove myself right. But I think about generational wealth. So this is for my kids. Everything I'm doing literally is for my kids. Like me, I'm cool because all I need is knowledge. For real, for real. I'm saying rich. All I need is knowledge. That's what Larry June said. Now it's just like you know, for them to have wealth and them for them to inherit uh, something I never had before. Okay, okay. How many kids you got? I got no kids. <laughs> oh, okay. This is all like the future. Yeah, this this is like the future mindset. I don't want to have kids to like I'm like thirty or something like that. Like I said, like right now I'm about to be twenty five in a week. But this is just for, like, like I said, in the future, uh, for them to grow up so, so they can inherit something for them to take over the business, things like that. Um, so that's all. That's all really what what I'm doing it for. It's, it's more of a family thing. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I ain't got no kids either. And I'm about to be 29 in two months. I still ain't got no kids. I'm like, I ain't ready, though. I ain't ready, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just chilling on that part. You feel me? But like I said, it just, it just um, so they can inherit something. I want a boy and a girl, whatever, you know, whatever I get. You know, I'm blessed with that regardless. First, I want two boys just because that's how I grew up. I got a brother and, of course, myself. So, it's just like, all right, I want two boys because of that. I'm, I'm more, like, more familiar with that. But I say a boy and a girl, I low-key think that if I have a girl, I feel like my daughter she's going to be like the business savvy out of the two. That's what I feel. I feel like she's going to be like cutthroat with the business. But we will just see what happens in the future. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. That's good though, man. You got your priorities straight. You got everything going on. Let's talk a little bit more about your art because I'm scrolling through your, uh, I'm scrolling on your page right now on your, um, I'm going to, you know, I'm on, I don't want to put, okay, I just want to make sure with this camera, y'all can see it. Little Uzi Vert custom Air Force Ones. You know, <laughs> these hard. It's, it's, you know, y'all need to go on this website, man. I know the 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 phone a little small, but these hard. Y'all need to check this out. The, the, the super see, I'm a Dragon Ball Z fan. When I seen the when I seen the trunk shirt right, I was like, oh yeah, I got a rocks with him. R. I. P. Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Art of Peace. Look at rose gold drip. Look, you know what I'm saying? And my, my dog got a, the website hard for real. Nice little yeah. website. I'm telling you, yeah, I like I like your art because it's it's you know, especially because it's what you do and you following your passion. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I that's what I really uh, try to strive for a lot of people because if you don't if you work for if you work for somebody that you don't really see yourself there for a long time, it really takes a toll on you. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like working these nine to fives. It's good. You know, working a nine to five is a good life experience. It's a good way to teach you how to be responsible. But at the end of the day, the main goal is really to be your own boss. Yeah, for real. Like, wait, when it comes to your goals and your dreams, you got to make sure that at first you can't listen to everybody because one, everyone's not going to have that same vision as you just because one, it's either they lack knowledge as in the context of what you want to do or uh, just in general, like, when I started doing shoes, everyone was like, bro, you want to do what? Like, get out of here. You're tripping. But mind you, customizing shoes just, like, became a big thing now, you know. In 2013, it was not a big thing at all. So people was like, bro, you want to do this? You want to do that? No, you're tripping. How you going to make a living? How you going to do this? And the whole time, I'm like, you just don't see the vision. But it's like, you don't see the vision because you haven't done the research like I've done research. So what's going to knock on you? It's I spend more time learning about this stuff. I see what's going on. You just haven't seen what I saw. So of course you're not going. You're not going to have uh, that vision. Of course you're not going to have that insight. Like oh no, you probably going to be successful. But also back then, I was a terrible artist as well. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I, <laughs> I just. I just started like freehand drawing in like 2015. I want to say, and yeah, bro. Like back in college, my roommate. I remember I drew some this up zero, and I was like, yo, how does it look? And he looked at me, he was like, he was like what, what, what's that supposed to be? And I was like, nah, bro, get it. He's like, well, you like it? What you think about it? He's like, hell is this, Star Wars? I said, nah, bro, it's Sub-Zero. He said, hell no, this is trash, bro. <laughs> he just went to his room. And like, after that, like, that's like, all right, for sure. And I just realized, like, all right, if I want to take this serious, then I got to learn how to adjust to the game. I got to, you know, add new characters and uh, characteristics and attributes to myself. So, that's how that started. But yeah, if you have dreams, never get discouraged. What people say, just keep going, keep working, you know, find a way. That's it. Because everybody just out here is trying to find a way. They're trying to find a blueprint. But once you find a blueprint, you solid. Do you do, you do customs clothes full time? Yeah, I do all that. So right now, I'm currently in my studio. So I got the green screen behind me. Um, I'm, I, I'm looking at the heat press. So I have a heat press, I have a printer. I got a computer like to print out all the stuff so I can do heat press. Um, I customize literally whatever paint can go on, I can do it. So craziest thing I've done um, was probably a suitcase, maybe. I did suitcase, any wood pieces, uh, jackets, uh, jeans, shoes, like literally I, I do anything that paint can go on. So that's no problem at all. What was the what was one of the hardest things that you painted on? The hardest thing I painted on, um, it was, hmm, it was, it was probably a suitcase, 
just because it's a it's kind of like a rubber material. So rubber, when it comes to paint, paint doesn't um, um, like infiltrate the rubber material just because of how rubber is created. So you have to make sure that you have to prep everything properly and you have to prep things in a different way. You have to sand stuff down. You got to put like adhesive on it. Uh, you got to, you know, make sure that you strip it down with acid. So you got to do all these different things to it. So once you actually do that and then once the paint goes on it, you got to make sure that the clear coat is on top of that. But you have to make sure that there's more clear coat than anything else just because it's rubber. If it gets hit by concrete or anything like that, you know, it can scratch it off. It can, you know, mess up everything. So that's probably one of them. Um, the other thing is probably foam posits, like shoe bars, because that's kind of the same thing. Uh, shoes is literally made or usually made out of leather or uh, anything else, like this, like the Jordan 11s is patent leather. Uh, you got, you know, Christian Louis Vuitton, like heels, that'd be like a patent leather type of thing. You have all these different things, suede, nuba, but foam posits is more of a rubber-ish material as well. And it's a breathable, it's a breathable uh, livable thing. So when you walk, you know, it stretches out and does all the stuff. So that's one thing that's also, um, that was kind of different as well. But that was cool. Like, I've, I've, you know, I've done so many shoes before, uh, so that's not even a problem. Okay, okay. So what, what, what was the most expensive shoe somebody ever paid for? The most expensive? Um... I did these. It was it was probably had to be between these the Louis Vuittons. Um, I did these red bottoms. It was like a tropical flower uh, design on them. So that was one of them. But that's just because of the detail, the how the the thought process behind it, the preparation. Because that was different, and then it's a luxury shoe. So now it's like all that into one makes the price go up a little bit higher. And then the other one was probably the Jordan 1. You say you rock with Dragon Ball Z. I did these um, Goku Vegeta pieces. Uh, so I, I did this shoe. It was a split. So it was uh, it was the Yin Yangs before. And then I made them like white, black, and blue, like these splits. Uh, I had Goku on one side. Uh, he was turned up, you know. And then I had Vegeta on the other side, the, the Capsule Course logo on the other side of that. And then... Um, that was that was I'm not gonna say the price range, but it was it was it was over like it was it was over the typical shoe that you see on the website. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. Oh yeah, especially if you had the you had the whole. I can lay back now. Do you have it? You you got anything you can show show everybody right now? Do you got anything in person? Um, shoes wise, I'm working on some shoes, so I can show you like. Um, uh, a lot of, like a little sneak peek with that, but I got like some canvases and stuff like that that's around. Oh, I mean, give me one second. I'm sorry. Okay, no, take your time. Uh, if you're listening on Anchor right now, make sure you go check this out on YouTube, Candyman TV, so you can see the visual. So I'm gonna show you. I got two. I got this is pretty big. So this is a wood piece. Let me get on the other side so you can see more about the light. We got, we got this wood piece. So this is just like a huge circle. I wood engraved everything myself. So all this that you see is wood engraved. You got this chessboard. That's all wood engraved. Um, and then on the other side, you got this. So all this as well, just wood engraved. Um, this is just one thing that I did. I call it uh, Heads or Tails. This is the Garden of God on this side. And then this side is really, I don't have a name for this, but yeah, I just call this the Garden Guy. This is more, but this is more like Spanish art. It's like a Picasso S feel. Um, so that's this. And then. Hey, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard. And then this is one of my favorite canvases I've done. Um, this is called 52 Card Pickup. And this is more, um, I did this in 2018. I was going through reverse culture shock, so I studied abroad, like I said, so when, you, when I came back, everything was just, like, weird. Like I said, like, Western and, and Eastern civilization is two different mindsets. So, I was kind of, like, in a funk when I was doing this, and this is more so, of like, the Joker and batman S type of thing. I have a love-hate relationship with the Joker. Uh, he kind of, like, haunts me, like, in my dream, just so I'm going some weird shit, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but... That's that's what this is. I feel like this is kind of more detailed 
um, and almost like the execution of all how the hues just change, but they the hues is like perfect how they how they go. It's, it's not completely like two shades or three shades away. It's through that the next shade that's going at that level, and then it's more negative space that's in the background. So I think that's also kind of a unique factor, just because especially with more of the Joker, you see more of like a rowdy thing that's all over. But since you have the negative space. Um, uh, you have the negative space that brings it out more, but also you want to focus on like the face and everything like that. And then we got this glove, but the way I look at it is like, all right, so what's really the glove? Is it Batman like that's holding it up, or is it like the Joker? Because on this part you have like a mirror. I don't know if you can tell on, the, on like you know through the through the camera, but it's like a shadow back here, so you have a mirror that reflects. So it's really like what's the real type of thing, you know? It's one of those ones. So. Those are two pieces I have. Um, like I said, shoes. Um, let me see if I can if I can find a pair that I'm working on. Make sure y'all go follow on Twitter underscore Chris Childs, Instagram underscore Chris Childs. Check out more of his artwork. So these shoes right here. One, these are I finished with them, uh, and then this. These are, uh, these are the, actually have some Star Wars joints. Ooh. So yeah, like, oh, that's right there. And then on this side, you know, you got Darth Maul. You got the 3M shoelaces. So all the whole shoe was just white before. So you got 3M shoelaces. Once you, you know, take a picture of the flash, this like just blings out. And then you got Vader on this side. And that's on the other shoe. Yeah, Ooh. and then you got him on this side, it's like, oh, 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 them hard. So you got those, and then these are the ones that I'm working on. Um, these, these aren't done at all. I don't know when I'm going to finish these, because honestly, I've been working on these for like a year, but I got so many different orders I'm doing. This is just more like a freestyle shoot. Uh, I usually do a print shoot every so often. My mom's favorite artist is Prince, so it's kind of like, I just make it just like, for her, these shoes aren't for her, but I'm just like, just kind of make it for her type of thing. I got the split right here. We're still not done with it. Um, so we got that, and then we have on this side, we got this shoe. It says rain right here, so it's purple rain that goes around. And then I don't know what I'm going to do, like in a middle piece. I don't know if I'm going to leave it black. I don't know if I'm going to put Prince face on it. On the jump man, back in like 2013, people used to put like the actual person face, so... People will put like Prince right here as a jump man. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, like just to go back to like the retro days. I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do with that. But the bottom is gonna be white, it's taped right down on it. Uh, I might add like some luxury shoelaces, like some gold shoelaces or something like that. But we'll see. That's that's uh, those are those two. So yeah, that's just uh that's some stuff that uh, I'm working on or I completed. Uh, everything else, like I said, like that's, that's basically, that's all that I got with me right now. Everything else has already been shipped out. Um, like I said, I, I make shirts. I'm my own clothing company. So the website, you got Shop Chris Childs. That's like my brand. But then you also have uh, my t-shirt distribution. So I make shirts for people and stuff like that. So I just ship out a whole bunch of shirts for other people's brand. So that's, that's basically what I do. Like I try to help myself as in, you know, promote myself extra quality. Always, you know, uh, um, stress quality over quantity because I don't care how much you put it out you can put out 30 things but it's all mid like who cares if you put out 30 mid stuff you know but if you put out two pieces and it's like oh this is quality then people are going to go over the quality so uh, all clothing is like extremely nice material uh, extremely soft and breathable uh, same stuff with the, with the prints you know you can wash it a hundred times it doesn't fade or anything like that um, so that's what I try to stress. So if I see a, a, a problem, then I try to solve that problem for other people. And that's what I was noticing with the clothing stuff, like the distribution stuff, um, that other companies around, I'm from Kansas City, all the other companies around here in the metro area, they was taxing people. And I was like, all right, I see that y'all taxing people. I went through y'all. I went through a couple of different, you know, services to get my stuff done. And I'm like, this is too saturated. I know it's saturated because I created the art piece, you know? So I was like, all right, this is too saturated. This this doesn't even look like this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that was going on, too many flaws, too many errors. So I helped myself out by getting all this stuff myself and like producing it. But 
I was like, okay, I know if I'm having this problem, 10 other people are having this problem as well. And then not just that, but I just graduated. You know, I'm, I was a fraternity in college, so I also know, like, okay, these people need shirts as well. They need, they need clothing items, they need all this stuff like that because they usually get X amount of clothing items per semester. So my whole thing was, okay, I can go, I can use that community, I can reach out to them, I could uh, supply this, this service towards them, I can help them out by, you know, cutting down the cost because these people are going to be taxing them X amount. Uh, so I can cut down the cost and make things more affordable, but also give you better quality products. So both of those kind of go hand in hand with my personal brand, but then also with, you know, kind of like my service brand as well with the, the t-shirt distribution. Okay, yeah. That's what's up though, fam. You got the whole you got the whole business going on. Plus like, like I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, honestly. Like I worked jobs. Uh my first job was at Old Navy. It felt like Kanye. Uh that was like a little temporary job. You know, I just worked um Christmas after like two, three months. Uh, they let me go because like I said it's only temporary. People only want you like for Black Friday, especially like during retail. After that, I worked uh, in a nursing home and that that was probably the the best job I ever had, not from actually working there, because I hated that job. Like, I absolutely hated that job. I mean, I'm in a nursing home. Uh, I'm seeing, I, I, I'm working with my friends. We, like, in the kitchen, like, you know, scrubbing dishes and taking out the trash and doing all this other stuff. So we in the kitchen doing that. So I'm cool with my boys, you feel me? But, the, like, the managers and stuff like that, I wasn't cool with them. Uh, we used to run, like, death. Like, you know, we in the nursing home, you people die there. 24-7, you know, multiple people a day. The first day of the job, I was stuck in the elevator with two dead bodies. So it's like, that experience, you know, it's like, all right, this ain't for me. You feel me? Like, no, we got to do something about it. Like, it's as simple as that. And so every so often, like, you know, I, I, in college, I have jobs and all this stuff like that, but it was more so. I was always, even from my like first grade of, of, of elementary school, like, selling something or something was going on. So it's more like, all right, how do we, um, how do we keep doing this? Because obviously something is there. But I was always doing this my life. Okay. So what other plans do you got? I remember you said you was, um, you were into the stock market and uh, building credit, especially credit, because credit is really everything. What, uh, what made you want to get into the stocks? Because I, I recently just got into stocks. Like I've been wanting to get into it for a while, but I recently bought some, and I'm doing pretty well for myself for you know starting off. Uh, what? How how long you been in the stocks? Uh, I've been looking at the market since 2015, 24, like the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. But I haven't uh, participated in the market until last year, until COVID actually hit. So once that happened uh, in March, when we went on shutdown. I said, okay, now I I have to participate. Like there's no other option. Uh, just because I've been watching it so long, I've been seeing things go up and down. Um, I, at that point in time, I didn't know how to read charts. Uh, so you have different things like the falling wedge, uh, you, you know, the cup. You have all these different things um, uh, like jargon that, that people use to express, you know, what's going to happen for that thing. That you know, that ticker ticker it will be like Apple. Um, so at Apple tickers, I think APPL or AAPL, something like that. So for that ticker, it's like, okay, this is what it's going to do. Um, so, I, like I said, I didn't actively get into it until last year. Um, but once I was I was already, uh, I should say, like, aware of what was going on. So after that, I was like, all right, I got to be active in that. Because so much stuff was going down. And you never want to buy at a high. You always want to buy at a low and then let it run up. Um, so that was, that was the reason why I got into that. And because also the fraternity that I'm in, uh, all these people, I was seeing people like, you know, pull up in Porsches. We will go to like these houses and stuff like that. I'm, I'm in a white fraternity, right? It's not considered a white fraternity, but if you look at the composite pictures, which is basically like the yearbook pictures, I'm in a white fraternity. I'm the first black dude in my chapter in the last decade. You feel me? Right. So I was like, all right, let me pick this. Let me pick everyone's brain and see what they're doing because now I'm seeing things where I'm coming from. I come from Wyandotte County, right? Kansas City, Kansas. This is the sixth most dangerous spot in America. You feel me? Like, simple as that. You can look it up. <laughs> so it's like, all right, I'm around this, but I see this. So I'm in a whole different, different environment. Let me pick everyone's brain because everyone, either one, do not take this road that I take uh, because of anything. When I first... 
I literally like fought with my homies because he was like, bro, you joining the white fraternity? Like, this is crazy. Like, no, nah, like, you a sellout, that type of stuff. Like, I mean, literally, like, this fault, you feel me? Because of just the, those differences. But he didn't understand why I was doing it. So it was more like, all right, I, I got to get this education. I got to I gotta learn this because, like like I said, the environment that I come from, we don't, we don't know this at all. We don't know about credit. We don't know about stocks. We don't know, know about none of that. So like, let me pick these people brains and not I pick these people brains and I got that game. It's like, okay, let me first use this for myself so I can see what works and what doesn't work so I can learn how to execute that. But then once I learn the execution wise, I can go and start teaching people itself just because I'm all about, you know, giving back to the community. I'm huge like for the length of business and stuff like that and just try to give out that education. And I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good, fam. Because this is good knowledge. People need to hear this. Because that's what I, I like. Because we, a lot of black, a lot of black communities don't know nothing about stocks. They don't know nothing about credit. Like, right, when I was growing up, the only thing I heard about stocks and credit, there was a, oh, don't get a credit card because you're going to go in debt. Oh, don't join, don't do the stock market because you're going to lose money. But they would never explain how, like, h- how did I lose this money? How did I, how would I be able to make it back or how would I be able to do better? You know, they, but, you know, but that's a good thing because we're in a generation, the generation that we're in now is, 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 is a lot, is a lot more conscious and a lot more aware of financial stability than what our, what, what our older, like, uh, grandparents and great grandparents and things used to be, used to be. So, you know, we just got to stay prepared, especially because we starting young. We both in our 20s. You know what I'm saying? It, it, then that's a good thing. That's a good thing, and and it, that's a, and you're a good inspiration, especially in your community, in your city. You good inspiration because we need you, we need more influences like you. You know what I'm saying? We need more influences that are positive, that are gonna help spread the, the spread generational wealth, like you was talking about earlier. So that's really a good thing. So is there anything else you want to say or like, give any shout outs? Um. Let's see. Uh, I got a book coming out. Uh, if you want to learn how to customize shoes, I have an ebook. I have that. Uh, if you want to know about traveling, that's also coming out as well. And then um, another book is coming about credit and and just about learning more about your business. If you want to like have your own LLC and stuff like that, because people they always say about getting a business, but no one actually tells you how to properly go about that channel. Um, so that'll be coming out as well. That's one of my last books. The, uh, customizing book will be coming out next month um, in in June. Uh, also with the traveler's guide as well. Um, so if you want to travel anywhere that you uh, anywhere that you want to go, uh, any places that I've been, I have screenshots. I have places you know highly recommended places like you know where to go to, to eat, save money, uh, watch how to get you know pickpocketers and stuff like that. Uh, all these different things. Then the credit one that's be uh, one of my last ones just because I want to make sure that that is start to finish remotely sound or everything uh, that you need, how to increase your credit, how to, you know, in- increase your credit, not just as your person, but also as your business. Um, uh, they just go about investing and going about your LLC. Uh, besides that, my website is www.shopchrischiles.com. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Chris Childs. Same thing on Twitter. Uh, my YouTube is uh, Chris Childs Life. There, I just basically just vlog my lifestyle. Also, I, uh, do about it, like shoot tutorials, um, also different things with art tutorials, like helping people out as well. And then I'm going to start um, doing uh, printing um, on there as well. So if you want to learn how to print your own, uh, you know, clothes and how to make stuff properly, uh, and then also comparing prices to other equipment, I'll be posting videos on that real soon as well. Uh, so yeah, that's everything. Shout out to my boy uh, Tess. He also a, a customizer. Uh, you can find him on Off Day Customs. Shout out to my boy B Park. Um, uh, that's Original Visions. All these are, are wonderful artists. Everyone in KC is doing a lot of great things, not just with the artists, um, like visual artists, but music wise. You know, Aaron Alexander, AL, Juby the Truth. He's a guy on BET. He's a finalist. So go vote for him. It's, I'm just giving out shout outs right now. My <laughs> <laughs> colors. Um, Eric Rice. Uh, play odds like all these people are doing crazy things they've been on Google they've been like doing crazy stuff for the city and like some of these people like they they do so much uh, they do high things which should be talked about more um, but you know they don't have the recognition that they should get and so I just want to you know be over here to give y'all and to express love I see what y'all doing I love what y'all doing y'all keep working hard y'all keep grinding alright y'all Chris Childs 
my boy, yes, entrepreneur, sir. self-made. Yes, sir. Y'all make sure y'all go follow him, man. Y'all, we got we got more to come soon. Just stay tuned. I appreciate it. I'm glad to have him. Oh yeah, I can't be rude. I'm glad to have you as a as a guest. I'm glad that you took your time out your you know busy work schedule. You know what I'm saying? And Use the first interview. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. I know. I said I was delaying. I know I was on delay. But my boy, the very first guest, legendary interview, by the way. This is legendary. This, Appreciate this it. is legendary. <laughs> There's two legends. Y'all better watch out. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm glad to have you as a guest on the show. I'm definitely, because uh, you know I'm in Missouri too. We definitely going to have to do, we're going to definitely have to link and do some business together for sure. Uh, 1,000, yeah. Oh yeah, bro. I was gonna say that. I'm gonna go, like, for real. <laughs> for sure. All right, y'all, man. Y'all stay tuned. This is the candy shop, and y'all, y'all have a wonderful day.